So before we jump into the gameplay, uh, I want to talk about Anthem a little bit in general and give some first impressions or third impressions or after 25 hours of playing gaming impressions because that's how much time I put in over the weekend it was a full 25 hours. I think I'm clocking in right at level 17, just a little bit above that. Um, and I read a lot of reviews on Anthem over the, this today uh, specifically, and a lot of them were saying a lot of the same things that I tend to agree with. They tend to be a little more harsh than I am, than I would be, simply because perhaps I'm a little more forgiving or I really want this game to succeed. Um, but but there is, the game is not without criticism. So I'm not going to spend a long time doing this because at some point I'll probably do a full Anthem review or Anthem suggestions, but I do want to spend just a few minutes talking about my first, second, impressions after the VIP demo and after playing the game. So first of all, the game is way better than it was during the VIP demo. Uh, there's a lot of well, there's a lot of argument, but we don't usually call a demo a demo and a beta and a beta. And a pretty reasonable argument can be made that a demo is supposed to be a tiny, a tiny slice of the shipping game. And that was not what the, the VIP demo was. The VIP demo was, by all intents and purposes, for, for lack of a better term, it was strictly a beta. They were testing the servers and they were trying out game systems. And that build was clearly weeks and weeks older than what the current build was that they were working on over there at Bioware. So uh, the demo was, the game is way better. The flight controls have been improved on the PC. The swimming controls are a little better, although swimming still sucks, I think, by far and large. Um, the world is now fully open. There's lots to do. The loot is good. The itemization is good. And the gameplay itself is fantastic. I absolutely love the freedom of movement. The sound effects are over the top fantastic. And it is a visual feast throughout. I mean, when you're out there in the world, just the waterfalls, the sizzling of your engines as you hit the water, the the punchiness of when you take off flying, uh, the the uh, resonating clang as you smash your head into the wall for the 15th time, as I am wont to do <laughs> all the time. I mean, just everything about the game is visually and uh, auditorially satisfying when you're out playing. And especially when you and your teammates are landing those combats, combos and blowing things up. Uh, the, the gunplay mechanics are really pretty good. The The... the the RPG mechanics are pretty strong. You definitely have better class specializations with the four javelins here than you did in Destiny with their four specializations. I feel pretty strongly about that. So those are all the really great things. Uh, the gameplay, when you're playing it, uh, it, when the game is good, the game is at its finest. Um, if you spend any time looking at reviews, you've already heard about some of the bad things, but I'm going to touch on them as well. Uh, hey, thank you for the follow, Chaotic Goodish. I absolutely appreciate it. Um, so uh, some of the bad things I think that are... Uh, one thing, everyone's talked about the loading screens, and not without uh, reason. There are a lot of loading screens, the, and and depending on whether or not you've installed the game on an SSD or not, they may t or may take longer or not as long, but they're definitely in the way. You can't go, um, well, they're just everywhere. You know, 14 years ago, Blizzard figured out how to move you from a common rolled instance into a phased instance without, it's seamlessly, without any loading screen, just transitioning you every time that you ride in and out of your garrison from Warlords of Draenor, you moved into your own personal instance and out of your own personal instance back out into the common world, and you did it seamlessly. Uh, very few companies have figured out how to do that and how to do it well since since Blizzard pioneered it uh, years ago, and EA certainly has not. So we are constantly dealing with loading screens uh, coming in and out of the game. When you come out uh, of the Fort Tarsus, you get a little bit of a loading screen jumping into the mission loading screen. Then from the mission loading screen, you've got to go to the forge. Another then you go from forge back to the mission loading screen. Then from the mission loading screen back out into your your um, your mission. And if you're in the free world, if you go to any of the dungeons, you'll have another loading screen going into the dungeon and another loading screen coming out of the dungeon. Sometimes on the missions, you may be in the middle of a mission, you get a loading screen to cut to a cutscene, spend some time in the cutscene with all of your teammates, and then drop out of the cutscene and come back out. Uh, so that's a problem. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Those are, that's sort of endemic to the foundations of the game, so I'm not sure if they can fix that. They might add some quality of life uh, shortcuts, as they did already, to allow you to go directly to some areas without having to go to the loading screen. Like, for instance, right now, when you leave uh, free play, you can actually choose to go to Port Tarsus or directly to the Forge or directly to um, the, load, the launch bay, which is the common shared space. Um, there are also some just straight up poor design choices and PC Magazine touched on these and I 100% agree with them. Robert and I uh, harangued on them um, tremendously over the last couple of days as we were playing. And some of these things I know that they're already fixing. So for instance, uh, when you're playing the game, you're going to get to the mission, the, <laughs> the tombs mission where they drop the, 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 the four tombs or five tombs, four tombs out on you in free to play and the tombs turn into challenges and you have to complete the challenges out in free roaming. 
before you can open the tomb and go into it and push on. And this is a blocker to the main story progression. You cannot move the story forward until you've completed all these challenges. And they're fairly time consuming. And what's worse is that right now, the way they're set up in the game, they actually uh, deter you from joining up with friends or people, especially the chest gathering one. I'm not going to harangue too much about the chest gathering one, but in short, right now, you have to be the person to open the chest to get credit for the 15 chests. And if you're out there playing with your friends, or even if you're playing with three other people that are doing missions with you, um, it's quite likely you won't get to click in the chest and it can be hugely frustrating. So the the chest one, there is a short version. Uh, there is actually, you can go to, there's a map that's available right now where you can find all the treasure chest locations. So I'm gonna put that link up later on so people can check that out. Uh, and then of course, um, by the for the real launch uh, next week, they will have it so that anywhere within a certain radius of the chest when it is opened will get credit for the opening of that chest. So they're fixing that problem, so I'm not going to go too far too into that. But a lot of other sort of poor decisions, they still don't have a way for you to mark a waypoint in the open world when you're playing in free realm. That is almost unforgivable. I can't believe that. Um, there is a, uh, there's a lot of... Yeah, it can just retcon it. Progression will start at level 3. Exactly, right? Um, there's many things that you can do along those lines. To kind of get around it so so they are um they don't have a, a waypoint marker out in the middle of the of the thing there was something last night too now i can't remember what it was that uh robert and i were both like how do they get how does this ship in such a way that they, that's that they consider that to be okay and maybe it was the chest thing and maybe it was some of the other things i can't remember so um the also the the interior of Fort Taurus is, is too quiet and feels too disconnected from the rest of the world. And this is where I think, I'm going to boil this down to where I think Anthem is going to have a hard time finding its legs. Because Anthem is trying to do something where they want to combine the sort of storytelling goodness of a single player narrative along with the multiplayer PvE goodness of playing with your friends in multiplayer missions. Um, but it's hard because there are two ends that, that are in conflict with each other. And people that love single player, uh, the people that love Bioware games for the story and the romance and the characterizations and all of the back lore and the lore and the, and the information, they want to take their own time with that stuff. They want to get, uh, uh, progress at their own pace and they want to take all the time to read those things and, and follow up on that stuff. And quite often, I'm that person myself. I want to roll through the story and take my own time and I don't want to listen to other people talking to me while I'm trying to read the things and I don't want to feel pressured to have these conversations and to go through those things. On the flip side of that, I love the multiplayer PvE stuff. I love the cooperative PvE stuff. But when you're doing that mode, when you're in that mode, you don't have time for story. You don't want to be forced to sit and wait on someone else to go through the story. You don't even want to do that story yourself. I don't, at least at that time. I want to go from mission to mission. I want to get whatever I need from, my friend, from the information in order to go to the next mission. And I want to get right back out there and get to playing. So these two goals are at odds with each other, I find. And the Venn diagram of overlap between the player bases, the people that enjoy this and the people that enjoy that, the little Venn diagram, those are the people for whom Anthem is ultimately made. <laughs> and it's a slim slice. It consists of myself, probably my friend Skopik, Mr. Anderson, Belgas, and about a half a dozen other people I can think of off the top of my head. But a whole lot of other people that are Destiny players won't want to squat with the story. And a whole lot of my Dragon Age and Mass Effect uh, friends who love all that part of it, they don't want to feel pressured to have to jump back into the mission and do it with their friends. So I, I worry about that part of this for Anthem. I worry about if they're going to find their legs and they're going to figure out how to do this because it's a hard problem to solve. And kudos to them for attempting to solve it, um, for trying to find a way to do it. And they did that by basically making everything you do in the story part of the game single player, uh, isolated just for yourself. But they've almost cut it off too much because when I roll into Stormwind, Stormwind feels like a part of Azeroth. It feels like a part of the world. Uh, when I roll into Morrowind, or Morrowind feels like a part of Elder Scrolls Online, that game. When I'm stepping into Tarsus, it's like I'm cut off and I feel in a whole different game. Uh, I'm a different character, I'm a different persona, and all those things. And then when I go back out to the, to the, to the world, it's like I move back into a different game. So. That's the stuff that I'm worried about. Uh, overall, I'm still enjoying the game. I would recommend the, the game with caveats in much the same way that I recommended Mass Effect Andromeda with caveats. Uh, and the caveats are, uh, you're gonna have to do some story. You have to like the story. You have to like reading story and participating in story to progress in the game. And if you hate that part of it, as some of my friends do, you're not gonna enjoy the game. Uh, conversely, 
you're probably going to have the best time in the game if you're a solo, if you're a, a casual solo player by teaming up with other people because the solo missions, running the solo missions are freaking hard. They're even on normal mode. They get pretty hard. A lot of the missions that I ran last night, I did uh, by myself and then I did them again with Robert and they are just so much easier. So the best, the best case scenario is to uh, find a friend or two that will let you do the story part on your own pace and not rush you. Uh, and then join with you to do your solos, or doesn't mind doing the backstory, going back and going over the back stuff. Um, uh, and to that, if you're watching uh, Scopic or anybody else who happens to be hanging, if you're a friend of mine and you see me on game, send me a message. Don't send it through Discord because I won't see it because my Discord is behind the screen. But feel free to send me a message if you have done a mission and you found it hard, or you just want to team up for a mission because teaming up with friends is way more fun than teaming up with other people. Um, and we'll jump on the Discord. Uh, I'll add you to the Discord. I'm not in the Discord right now because I'm chatting over here. I don't want to be interrupted by other people's voices. But uh, I'll, we'll jump in the Discord and we'll run a couple of missions together and you'll see how much fun it is. Uh, and, and as we discovered during the VIP demo, even three and four people, the games are just much more fun when played with friends. Uh, you just have to be aware that you probably, when you're playing with friends, it's okay if you want to tell your friend, hey, you know what, I'm going to bug out for a while because I'm going to go to the story parts and I don't want you talking to me while I'm doing the story parts. <laughs> so, and read running missions is fun as well. That's kind of a cool thing. Even if it's a bit repetitive, it, there's never a problem with going back and rerunning a mission for a friend because the gameplay is so much fun.